So welcome to Central Exchange. My name is Cece Rojas. I have the honor of serving as president and CEO. And uh, before I, I get started with a few brief remarks, I wanted to recognize that board members that are in the house, and they're my bosses, so I always want to make sure I take care of them. Our chair is Nancy Millard. She's here with us today. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to, to do that really quickly. And this initiative is so important, not just to Central Exchange, but to Kansas City and to our partner organizations. And it represents the first of its kind in the nation, culminating a five-month-long collaboration between the Mayor's Office, the Central Exchange Women's Foundation, and the Great, uh, Greater Kansas City and UMKC's Women's Center. And we are proud to be able to host this event today. Um, you know, on a national level, it's important for us because our, one of our fastest growing segments are entrepreneurs. 24% of our members are now entrepreneurs. And it's important because women-owned firms generated $1.3 trillion million in sales receipts last year. That's right, and we're growing. So that's why Central Exchange felt like this was such an important effort for us. So now I'd like to introduce our, um, our esteemed uh, guest, our mayor, Mayor Sly James, who was sworn in on May 1st, 2011. He was born and raised right here in Kansas City and learned valuable lessons about resiliency and dedication watching his parents work hard to take care of their families. Despite the challenges they faced, Sly's father, a chef, janitor, and small business owner, and his stepmother, who helped manage their business, still made sure that Sly and his brothers had the opportunity to go to school and follow their dreams. This laid the foundation for Mayor James' commitment to education and ensuring every child receives a high quality education, regardless of where they live or their socioeconomic background. Mayor James focuses his efforts to make Kansas City best in four areas, education, employment, efficiency, and enforcement. Major accomplishments for his first years in office include streamlining processes at, at City Hall to encourage small business development, creating a culture of innovation in city government through the Chief Innovation Officer and Challenge Cabinet, capitalized on, ca capitalized on major investments in the arts by forming a task force, force to examine the public's role in arts and culture, and leading efforts for the installation of Google Fiber and promoting Kansas City as the region in the nation to have the most cutting edge technology. In addition, Mayor James has worked to raise Kansas City's statewide and national profile by highlighting the cultural and human capital resources of our great city. I had the opportunity to work with the mayor on the 2016 RNC convention bid. I have to tell you, he did a fabulous job <laughs> of advocating for our city, all the great things, and he also sang, going to Kansas City. So everybody, I had to, I had to go there, and he did a great job. In addition to the mayor's advocacy on all fronts, and he spanned several decades um, as a, working as obviously a lawyer here in Kansas City. He joined Blackwell Sanders uh, in 1983 and became the first African American partner in the firm's history. In February 2002, he started his own successful uh, small business, the Sly James Law Firm. Mayor James has been married to his wife, uh, Licia Clifton James, since 1981, as a proud father of four children. He has had a long passion for music and was the lead singer in the Amelia Earhart Memorial Flying Band. And a little known fact, his band once opened for Jefferson Airplane in Kansas City. <laughs> so with that, Mayor Sly James. Okay, we're certainly gonna have to start cutting down that intro. Um, thanks, Cece, uh, uh, for uh, an overly kind and generous introduction, and uh, thank all of you for joining us here today. Uh, I don't need to tell you uh, that March is uh, Women's History Month. Um, without question, it's appropriate to celebrate and learn from women in history who've pushed us uh, forward and pushed our community forward. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity uh, to use this kind of a bully pulpit that I get to use as mayor uh, to talk a lot about uh, the future of women's leadership in the community. Uh, that doesn't mean that we ignore the past. In fact, we embrace it because by embracing it, we'll understand uh, what those have done before and then we'll be able to build on that and take it to the ultimate uh, peak of their dreams. Um, I'm three years or so into my first term, and that means I've been to, I 
more meetings than I could possibly count. Um, in just about every area of the city on I don't know what types of topics, they vary from hour to hour, but there seems to be one constant that shows up and that is that uh, regardless of where I am, there generally aren't very many women in those rooms when I show up. Um, there have been times when, when it's been such uh, um, an absence so noted under the circumstances that it required some comments such as if I'm not coming back until you change it uh, type of a comment just to kind of get the point across. Um, you know, it's not good business. I don't care how you slice it, it's not good business. And it does not reflect our community when I, as a black man, walk into a room populated strictly by white males. Uh, that happens all the time. Um, there has to be some diversity uh, added in there, and women uh, certainly make up a huge enough part of this population and business workforce, et cetera, that they ought to be represented in all those rooms where business is being seriously discussed. Um, so I'm here to tell you that uh, that's a priority of ours. And I say ours because uh, I have an office uh, full of women and they never let me forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're on this one like white on rice. Uh, you know, I'm excited that we're the first city to be doing it in quite this way with the partnership that we have. The, uh, the Women's Empowerment Initiative, or WE, uh, is that public-private partnership between the Central Exchange and uh, the Women's Foundation of Greater Kansas City and UMKC Women's Center. Uh, all of us working together for a common goal, and that has been to examine the policies and processes of city government at this stage uh, to see what we're doing right and where we can improve. Uh, and I know that uh, you know CEC already, and she has been spearheading the uh, uh, initiatives, outreach efforts for women-owned businesses uh, to get their perspective on how our city's government can live up to the Chamber's big five goal of becoming the most entre entrepreneurial city in the entire country. Uh, CC's basically a walking Rolodex, you all know that. Um, I think that we ought to set up a new three-digit call number and call CC, and we can set it up so that we only have to pay half as much as we have to for other information, CC, get you started, and then, you know, we can leverage it from there. But basically, she knows everybody and has a phone number and, t and email, so CC, please um, take a bow. Thanks for letting us tap into your network. Uh, Wendy, there you are. Uh, Wendy's here. She's president and CEO of the Women's Foundation of Greater Kansas City. Uh, she met with uh, Joni and others on the staff uh, after only being in her job for about three weeks. And uh, they started laying the groundwork at that point in time for this partnership, and uh, they've never had to look back. And I'm very happy. For, please stand up and be acknowledged. On behalf of the uh, Women's Foundation, Wendy uh, commissioned a, and coordinated uh, a robust scientific research study of how our boards and commissions and task forces operate. Uh, that research is centered on and based on survey of women currently serving and who have served on um, uh, or who potentially want to serve on boards and commissions. And uh, Dr. Bethman that, uh, is a director of UMKC's, I'm sorry, before I move on to Dr. Bethman, uh, I know that we have the uh, two ladies from KU who actually were instrumental in coordinating and getting that research done, but I don't see you. Can you stand, please stand up so that you can be acknowledged. Uh, Dr. Brenda Bethman is the director of UMKC's Women's Center. Uh, she couldn't be here with us today, but she has been absolutely instrumental in helping us uh, to tap into that pipeline of future talent, a lot of which resides on some of our college campuses and thereabouts. Uh, however, uh, Arzi Umali, uh, the assistant director of the Women's Center, is here with us today. Arzi, where, where are you? There you are. Thank you very much. Thanks for supporting the WE Initiative.
Uh, and thanks to the Women's Center, uh, a new generation of uh, women uh, will view city government as a place where they can actually put their skills to work in the most productive way and put their skills to work in the service of others in this city. Uh, next month, the Women's Center is hosting a panel discussion on career opportunities within city government. And uh, I'll just say this now about Troy, I'm doing exactly what Joni frets about. Uh, and it's so nice to be able to do it face to face. She, she prepares these comments for me and she gets me all ready and then I just forget about them and say what I want. <laughs> I get back to them eventually. It's a great outline. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I want to acknowledge Troy uh, uh, at this point. I'm going to do it again later. But at this point, I want to acknowledge him for a couple of things. Because he has uh, been diligent and collaborative about getting the culture of City Hall turned around uh, to be much more customer citizen oriented, looking out instead of looking in, uh, uh, going out and soliciting comments as, afraid, as opposed to hunkering down and fearing comments because you felt like you were being besieged. Things are changing and the culture inside is changing. Frankly, we wouldn't be able to talk about some of the things we're doing and what we're doing here today without his help co uh, and collaboration. So Troy, take a bow, bro. So at the uh, panel discussion next month, what you're going to hear from is a deputy chief of police, uh, a director of, our director of public works, uh, our assistant city manager, a deputy director of parks and recreation, all of whom are women. And uh, they're going to talk about those opportunities that could be available and some of the things going on. It might be a great discussion. The most recent data that we have available tells us that women make up about 29% of our city's workforce, but they only make up about 23% of the positions at the department director level and above. Uh, now, frankly, when compared to the private sector, that's not too bad. Uh, but, and, and, and I am blessed to have eight out of 12 of my own staff members are women, four of whom are directors. Um, and, I will tell you this, um, I, I, I could not have asked for or planned for or gotten uh, through hook or crook a better group of people to work with. They make me look better than I have any right <laughs> to deserve. Uh, they do things for me that uh, they never get the right amount of credit for. So stand up, my, my folks, my peoples. Come on, stand up. Come on, Ashley. Kate, come on, you guys, all of you. Thank you. Uh, these, these, uh, these ladies um, uh, are outstanding in just about every way. Um, they work very well together. They work very well as a team. They stay focused on our core missions. They keep me out of trouble some of the time. Um, uh, nobody's good enough to keep me out of trouble all the time, but they do a very good job, and I'm, I'm indebted to them. Uh, we also know that uh, uh, when men and women hold the same jobs and get the same pay and are treated equally, that things get better and atmospheres inside the workplace improve. Uh, the issue that we have isn't pay disparity so much. It's just uh, getting women to be able to climb that ladder without bumping their head before they get all the way to the top. Uh, we heard from uh, women-owned businesses owners uh, like Justine Peterson, a microloan program uh, that gives them support uh, that these women-owned businesses that need help uh, are able to get. They turn their business ideas into a reality with the help of people like Justine. Uh, under my watch and Troy's watch, we're not going to settle for good enough when it comes to basically anything. Infrastructure or economic development or women's leadership opportunities all have a priority standing in, in what we do and for doing it well. Uh, while there are some good stories that come out of city government to tell about women's leadership, uh, you can see from the blueprint here that there's still some work to do and we plan to build on some of those successes. Uh, we've heard from the Central Exchange's outreach uh, that we have work to do to enhance our customers' experience when they apply for WBE certification, which is a big one. Um, and I'm pretty much ready to get on with that. Uh, Troy's ready to get on with that. He's here and he's pushed this for a while, I know. 
um, I want everybody to recognize that the presence of your mayor and the presence of your city manager sitting here uh, saying the same thing about what's going to happen uh, should be taken as a relatively good sign uh, that we mean what we're saying. Uh, business as usual is not good enough. Uh, doing business with the city shouldn't be so painstaking that it takes you away from actually doing your job uh, and running your business. Uh, and without a doubt, we need to ensure that uh, those firms that are certified as WBE are legit and bona fide WBEs uh, in order to make sure that you're never open to that flank attack on the credibility of the organization and the structure. Uh, the firms who try to get around the system negatively impact the system itself and everyone in it. Uh, there's a balance to be struck, though, by uh, serving as a paperwork impediment and then as a as a uh, partner to pros uh, prosperity. Uh, so to that end, what we're trying to do and what we're looking forward to seeing is the Central Exchange uh, certified as a WBENC regional partner organization uh, that will help tremendously with the certification process. Uh, with, I'm looking forward to that continued partnership with the city and the Central Exchange to improve the experiences of WBEs uh, when they do interface with our city government. Another factor um, that we've illuminated, I think, is that we need to increase the number of women serving on boards and commissions in this city. Uh, boards and commissions are often a stepping stone into other areas of city government, and we need to have those voices. Uh, serving the city in that capacity is a great way for women to lead, and the foundation's research has already revealed that a lot of women simply uh, don't realize that those opportunities are even out there. And they don't uh, necessarily think that the experiences that they bring to the table are relevant. Let me tell you, I've been in a lot of meetings about a lot of things in this city. And I can tell you that uh, there's a whole lot of people who have opinions that really aren't relevant but think they are. So those who have opinions that don't think they're relevant, my guess is they probably are. So. You know, we, we need to have experiences. Besides, the things that we do in this city are designed to have an impact on the majority of citizens. So how would any experience that you have not have some bearing on trying to design systems and approaches and processes that takes account for the most convenient access and portals for people in the city in order to interact with government? Every experience is valuable. You know, it may not be valuable on every subject every time, but the matrix of experiences make us who we are, and who we are is what we're trying to get at when we put these boards and commissions together. We need to hear from everybody. The uh, blueprint includes some strategies uh, to address some of the barriers that the surveys illuminated. This is not a survey or a report that's going to wind up on a shelf. Uh, this is that it will be dog-eared, and it will be used, and it will be put to life. Um, the foundation is going to help us reach uh, more potential applicants for boards and commissions uh, through their uh, good graces and outreach programs and contacts. And we're going to develop training for city boards and commissions so that when people get there, they don't feel like they know so little about the particular subject matter that they are intimidated by it and it takes them longer to gear up. It's not intimidating. I get to run a city, I tell you. If I can do it, you know, it's a lot of people. <laughs> you know, um, we also have to do things that are just common sense. When we're talking about women, you know, I don't know how we avoid the reality that as much as the men in this room want to think that we're really actually carrying our share of the weight, um, probably most of us don't do a lot of cooking, cleaning, and kid watching. Uh, that always seems to fall to the women of the, of the world in, in a disproportionate way. Uh, not in every household, but generally I'm talking about. We have to be aware of the burdens on women in terms of their time demands and family pressures uh, that if you're not thinking about it, you won't think about it. And you'll schedule things for things that simply don't make sense for them you know, uh, that they couldn't possibly attend because of other things that they need to get done, whether it's daycare or, or whatever the case may be. We have to be sensitive to that and we have to be willing to adjust our schedules to accommodate and reach a compromise where the most people can attend and bring all those experiences together. Um, 
we need to continue to reach out to that new batch of talent, those, those young women who are out there um, who you're going to want to pick up this torch at some point in time. Our future basically depends on that. And that was kind of why we went to Park Hill High School for the state of the city and talked to 400 juniors and seniors in high school. And uh, the message there was, although they make up about 5% of the population, they're 100% of the future. And I think that's true uh, across the board. Um, we launched this uh, initiative back last fall when we hosted uh, Kristen Helt Hetley, the uh, United Nations Director of Strategic Partnerships, uh, who was the keynote speaker at the Mayor's UN dinner. Uh, it seemed like the perfect setting with the perfect circumstances and the perfect way to honor our guest speaker at that time, considering the basis for this initiative is a very strategic partnership uh, between our offices uh, of the group that formed the WE initiative. And those organizations have done everything that they can to make this a success. So you may have noticed that I am a man of African American descent. I grew up during the Civil Rights Movement. Um, you know discrimination when you see it. You feel discrimination when it's visited upon you. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman in the sense of that feeling of less thanness that is part of being a target of discrimination. I am not a woman, however, and have absolutely no idea of uh, some of the things that women receive from others, how you may be treated in certain circumstances other than those that I see personally. And I don't have any idea about what it is like to be a woman in this society other than what I can see, which is not the same as actually experiencing it. I can tell you, however, that there is a sensitivity level that comes from that nexus of being minorities, or whatever you might want to call us at this point, that should bind us together and make us more sensitive to each other and to the environments that we're in so that we simply don't tolerate it and we put people who do it in check as much as possible. That's where we're headed and that's what we're trying to do. Um, I can promise you I don't consider this to be simply a box that we've checked off and now we move on. Uh, this is something that is going to continue. Uh, it is something that we can build on. It is something that can change our community. Uh, we need your help to do it. Uh, before I finish, and, and I will tell you, Joni, that maybe I should have stuck to your script. Uh, my, but um, before I finish, I do want you to come up here. Um, um, Joni has, uh, when we had this conversation the first time, I think it was kind of like, why don't we think about doing A, B, C, and D? And then I left for a couple of days and came back and she said, all right, I've done A, B, C, and D, what's E? Um, she has uh, worked uh, consistently, tirelessly, expertly uh, to knit this together and give it some life and breath. And for that, I'm internally grateful. Um, she is simply indicative of the quality of people that I get the chance to work with every day. Uh, and I'm very proud of you Thank and you. very happy for what Thank you've you. done. Thank you very much. <laughs> with that, if there are some questions, I'll try to answer a few. Uh, if not, it's up to you. Anyone? Bueller? Oh, hi, Denise. <laughs> hi, hi, Denise. How are you? Thanks. Right, Joni's phenomenal as well. Mm -hmm. I also want to point out, though, for those of you that didn't see on the wall outside, we have the, you were the first city to sign the proclamation for win-win right. in Kansas City when um, I was chairing win-win, and it's about getting gender diversity, which means women on for-profit boards. So I wanted to acknowledge that, because that was a year
year and a half ago or so. Well. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? No? Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. <laughs>